This is Adrian Webster, the internationally renowned motivational business speaker and best-selling author. And this is Dr. Jack Lewis, TV's favourite neuroscientist. Together, we've written a book called... Sort Your Brain Out. It does exactly what it says on the tin. Helps boost performance. By helping you understand how your brain works and exactly what you can do to get more out of it. From the brain's perspective, is there any way that you can improve your decision-making process? Yeah, from the brain's perspective, there most definitely are. It all boils down to gut instinct. When you can and can't rely on your sort of gut feel on whether you should go for one option over another. If you've got lots of experience of a certain type of decision-making you know, scenario, you can trust your gut instinct. You can trust your subconscious to steer you correctly in an appropriate way. But if you don't have any experience, if you've never, say, bought a house before, you absolutely shouldn't trust gut feeling until you've inputted lots and lots of relevant data. Do your research, speak to experts, ask other people that you know what their experiences have been, and then once you've fed your subconscious with lots of information, your gut instinct will start to lead you well. How come then, thinking about it, some of the best holidays I've ever had are when we've made a last minute decision? So presumably you and your wife have been on many different holidays in the past. Yeah. And so, your subconscious has lots of experience to draw upon. So when you're thinking, ah, should we go here, should we go there, should we go the other, you don't have to overthink it. If you did overthink it, you'd probably not make the optimal decision. But because you're both very experienced in selecting holidays, just like if you're selecting what you're going to have for lunch, you've done it many times before, your gut instinct will basically provide you with a nice little summary of whether it worked out well or badly in the past, and then you'll feel drawn towards the one that's going to be the best option, and away, you'll be pulling, you'll be pushed away from the ones which maybe didn't work out so well at some point in the past. As a motivational speaker, I like to practice what I preach. I also like to try and stay fairly fit. I'm incredibly focused when it comes to diet, although you might not think that looking at me. <laughs> Well, I do work very hard at it, but when I go into a restaurant, especially when I'm with a group of people, with family, with friends, it is sometimes incredibly difficult to resist the sticky toffee pudding. <laughs> Why? Why is it so difficult in those circumstances to put up resistance? It's because you're wired up, as we all are, to be biased towards immediate gratification. We humans, when it comes to decision making, will always have a tremendous bias towards immediate gratification over longer term consideration. So you want to stay fit, you want to stick to your diet, that's a long term consideration. But when you're in an environment that's tickling the buy button, that's the part of the brain called buy the, button. the buy button. It's, a, it's called the nucleus accumbens, it's part of the reward whoa, pathways. Whoa. Hang on a sec, the nucleus accumbens, is, what's that all about? It's the brain area which is fundamentally involved in predicting how much reward you will get from choosing a certain option. Now immediate gratification is, is what that pudding menu uh, basically embodies. When you're in a restaurant and you're considering should I or shouldn't I have uh, a pudding, that buy button is being stimulated by lots of other things. Nothing to do with the actual dessert. The company of your friends stimulates the buy button because you're enjoying their company. The friendly waiting staff stimulate the buy button, make you more likely to go for the temptation. The, the music, the lighting, everything about that environment makes you more weak when it comes to resisting temptation. It's an old saying that people often end up disappointed in life because they sacrifice what they want in the long term for the short term. Exactly right. Whereas sometimes, sometimes it's really important to do exactly that inhibit the urge to satisfy your, your, your desires to just eat that delicious cake straight away in order to gain a long-term benefit of a longer, healthier life. But when we're in those situations, when we're going in to those restaurant environments, being aware that that buy button is going to be tickled left, right and centre by other things, you know, pleasurable aspects of the environment you're in, it's going to 
bias your decision towards doing the thing that's bad in the long term, but really good in the short term. So just recapping then, most of people's decision-making process is going on below the surface that they're completely unaware of. Correct. Most of the time, decisions are made in retrospect. They are consciously thinking about a decision that's already made. Go with gut feeling if you have experience in that area. Correct. And be, be aware. aware of mm. the atmosphere that you're in. If you're in a retail environment or if any environment where somebody's selling to you or taking money off you, mm. just be aware of all the little things the TNT things that are going on around you. That's exactly right, but it's funny that I said beware and you said be aware. Be aware. What does that say about us? I don't know, Jack. Me neither. <laughs>